I first decided to be a journalist. It was post 9-11, I was living in New York, Afghanistan had happened, the United States was gearing up for war in Iraq, and being an Arab American, I grew up deeply entrenched in both cultures and felt an inexplicable sense to a certain degree, a desire, a need to try to go out there and because of my own personal life experiences, try to build cross-cultural bridges of understanding and compassion. I think I've ended up as being something of the accidental war correspondent. I didn't set out to have that be a focal point of my career. I most certainly am not an adrenaline junkie, but what really keeps me going out there every single day is those human stories. When it comes to the Middle East, the problems there are so multifaceted and so difficult to understand that a lot of times there's a sense that it's too overwhelming to be able to cover. And it's not, because every single issue that is transpiring can be simplified to the story of a single individual. From a child who all of a sudden is looking up to the sky as jets are flying overhead and pointing to barrel bombs because it's become the sick new twisted game that they play, where is the bomb gonna land next, to the others that find themselves convulsing in fears that they don't understand. We need to continue to strive to tell these different stories. On one level, the challenges that we face as opposed to our male counterparts are very practical. On another level, yes, there is perhaps something of an added risk, especially in certain environments uh, like Egypt, where there have been numerous horrifying cases of uh, women, not just female journalists, but women, um, being raped by the masses. But at the same time, being a female out in the field, it does bring with it certain advantages, especially as a Western journalist. We tend to exist in this gray space. So I can access the men, I can sit with them, have tea with them, speak with them, and they will, to the most part, treat me as something of an equal or at least as an unknown. And then I can turn around and I can spend time with the women that my male colleagues can't. And they open up to me even more. And I think there's a tendency, just generally speaking amongst people, to feel more comfortable opening up to a woman. So I would actually view being a woman out there as being an advantage. I don't believe that any one story is necessarily worth dying for, but if we look back at the body of work that exists because people are willing to keep going out to these front lines and taking the risk to tell those stories, if we look at how in the past those risks have helped individuals or demanded accountability, if we look at what has been created because of the existence of war zone correspondence, then that body of work and the changes that we have managed to bring about are worth dying for. And fighting for the integrity of the profession and fighting for the populations that are vulnerable and innocent, that is worth the risk as well. Of course, people are impacted by the violence. Of course, I'm impacted by the violence. And you do lose a part of yourself when you're out there that you won't ever get back. But when you're faced with the losses that the people whose stories you're covering, what they've gone through, it makes that part of yourself that you have to give up to tell their stories absolutely worth it.